Hi, Colin. This is the fourth video in my series on converting an iOS config to a Juniper EX config. In this video, we are going to go through the interface configurations and uh, the PoE element that most of you are going to be using on your access layer. So let's get right into it. Now, I would suggest if you haven't watched the other videos, they're good for context. We did the system configuration in the last video, and the first two videos deal with how to approach migrating your config and then actually building an intent-driven configuration kind of guide. It's really not practical to do one for one. I mean, you can spot check, but really what you want to do is capture the intent of what your switch configuration is. Now, from that initial uh, configuration that we put together, I've taken the interface elements right above me here, and you can see that it's broken into VLANs and the ports that those VLANs will be associated with, whether they be access or trunk. So let's just get right to it. Now the first thing I'm going to do is look at my interfaces, and you'll see that there are none there. I actually deleted the entire interface stanza at the end of my last video. And the reason I did that is because out of the box, the EX is going to have an entry for every single interface. Now if you're not used to Junos and you're used to iOS, that seems normal. In Junos, the configuration kind of overlays over the top of the hardware, which means that I can delete the interfaces I'm not using here. Well, in fact, I can delete all of them, but I'll still see those in hardware. It doesn't mean that they disappear, of course not. This is cool because it will allow you to eliminate cruft within your configuration. So particularly if you have a large virtual chassis, you don't have to scroll through page after page of interface. It'll also allow you to create configuration for interfaces that aren't there. And this is useful if you are building a VC or a template for a VC that might have you know, more members added at a later date. You can actually create and define those interfaces in config. And then when the hardware elements that map to that configuration are available, that configuration will just be automatically applied. Imagine that. You can build a template. Maybe you build it for the maximum number of virtual chassis members that you can have for an EX 4300. It's 10. I could build a template that has config for all 10 switches, and I can use it on virtual chassis that have three members, two members, five members, and it will work just fine, just the same on all of them. So what we do, we get into interfaces, and the first thing I'll do is I'll create a management interface. Uh, I can see what that management interface is by doing a run, show terse. It's different on different platforms. In this one, it's ME. Sometimes it's FXP. There's guides for this, so let's do set. ME0, and you can see that we've got a physical interface and a logical interface, or in our engineering speak, an IFD and an IFL. This syntax probably looks somewhat familiar if you're coming in from iOS. We call our subinterfaces units. So if I were to, you say, set this configuration, and then family ethernet, uh, actually, I'm sorry, it's in management interface, so it's got to be INET, uh, show ME. You'll see that that automatically creates this unit zero. So you can use this kind of syntax as a shortcut rather than typing out unit zero, or you can type out unit zero. It really just depends on how you want to do it. So I'm just creating that. That's a placeholder. I actually don't have a management interface here that I'm going to be configuring because I'm doing all of this in band and through console, but it is there now just uh, you know, so you can see how to do that. Now let's start with these VLANs, and of course we need to start with the VLANs. So let's go up a level and edit VLANs, do a show, and we can see we have the default VLAN here. Now that default VLAN is associated to an L3 interface that is, doesn't exist and won't exist because I don't plan on using the default VLAN. That's just fine. You can't delete it, but what you need to do if you're not planning on using it is delete the L3 interface that's associated with it. That way it's just a straight L2 VLAN if you don't have that IRB0, that basically that um, VLAN, that virtual interface for that VLAN, then it will complain when you try to commit. So let's just start creating these VLANs. And I might fast forward here uh, just so that you don't have to see the TDM, but you can hang on for the first one. So we'll do a set and you give it a name, we'll call it corpnet. Okay, VLAN ID is 1010. 
and that's it. Now there's a little bit extra configuration. It's basically this L3 interface bit. If it's a routed VLAN, uh, we'll get to that here uh, later on, definitely for the management interface that we're using here. But for now, we'll just create all the VLAN IDs. Now let's assign those to interfaces. Since this is going to be groupings of interfaces, I can either do these one at a time. I can use a range command that, similar to Cisco, will replicate the configuration that I'm putting in. It's called a wildcard command. And create the elements in the config. But since it's all going to look the same, I'm going to use an interface range what Juniper considers an interface range. So we'll do edit interface range and we'll give it a name. These will just be named after the VLANs. Call this one CorpNet. And in here, we put in the common interface configuration. Exactly what we would type into a discrete interface if we were configuring that. Uh, the only additive component here is that there will be a members command that will actually tell this interface range what interfaces to apply this configuration to. So I just do set unit zero, family ethernet switching, interface mode. In this case, we have access interfaces, and that's one through 20. Um, and we'll do VLAN, since this is the corpnet, corpnet. Nope. Members, corpnet. And then set member. There's a couple different ways to do this. Now, I'll use the member range. You can also use some regular expressions. Member range is a little bit uh, cleaner if you're new to Juniper. GE001. You can see what we have here. It's 1 through 20. We're zero indexed, but this does say 1 through 20, so that's what we're going to set up. 2, GE zero, 020. And since we have these trunk ports, We'll make those a separate group. Look at that interface range now. That's what it looks like. Let's do the next one. But if you don't specify an interface mode, specify an interface mode, uh, it is accessed by default. I just like to put it in. You can see I'm doing this from the interface part of the hierarchy rather than getting into the interface range itself. You can do it either way. I just like to show both. You can also put in the VLAN IDs here if you like, rather than the names. Now, there is not voice VLANs get applied elsewhere. If you wanted to define specific access VLANs for voice, Great, you would do it the way that I'm doing it here. But if this is traditional voice VLAN, we do that elsewhere. So we'll come back to that in just a moment. Uh, let's look at our config right now. Great. You can see that I still don't see the other interfaces. This is the entirety of the interface configuration. If you want to see groups that are applied, and this could be the interface ranges, it could be apply groups, which is out of the scope of this discussion, but these configuration elements that allow us to apply common config to uh, multiple parts of the configuration hierarchy. We would do a show pipe display inheritance. Now if I hit enter here, we're going to get a lot of these pound symbols, which are just basically meant to tell you where the inherited configuration is coming from. It can make the screen somewhat busy. So what I like to do is add no comments to the end. And that way you just get the output. And here you can see that this configuration has been applied to these interfaces, even though we didn't have to go in and put it in specifically. Now, the question always comes up, if I put configuration into the interface itself, does it supersede the group? And the answer is yes. It's, it's kind of like protocol rules. More specific always wins. If I were to define a description for these interfaces, which is actually not a terrible idea, let's do that for um, CorpNet, how about that? And put in description uh, corpnet and then show we'll just do one of the interfaces ge001 display inheritance uh, no comments you'll see i've got this description corpnet and that would be applied to all of the members of that range now if i were to 
go in here and actually set GE-001 description foo, and then show 001. You can see the descriptions there, and if I now do display inheritance, you'll see that it has overwritten the inherited configuration. And this is actually how I use this on my switch at home. I use interface ranges and then I put specific descriptions in those interfaces so that when you do a show command on the interfaces themselves, you'll see the ranges like you see here, and then you'll just see the descriptions for these interfaces and nothing more. I can do that. It'll delete the element that I put in, but it will not override the group that is elsewhere. Now we need to do the voice VLAN. That's under this cleverly named part of the, oh, pardon me, switching options, VoIP show Click here, set interface. Usually you can do all, I can also do the interface range here. So you can see that all my ranges are here. So you might say all access ports, that's a pretty common one. Or you might decide to constrain it further by creating either a group, new group that is just for your VoIP or a group user group you already have. So you might say you know, corpnet and, and management maybe. In my case, we're just gonna do it for, um, let's see, it says on all ports. So in this case, you don't put them on trunks. So we just do interface access ports. And now you've got the voice VLAN associated with those. So VLAN, and then we do uh, voice. Again, you can do that, or you can do the number, the VLAN ID, and that's it. And it doesn't look like I have the L3 configuration in this video, which is great because it's starting to get a little long. So I'll save that for the next one. I do have this last task and that is shut down unused uplinks. Um, in this case, uh, GE-000 is not in use. So I won't do it for all. I think this pretty much encompasses all of them. I think I'm not using port 47, but on uh, if you want to disable an interface on in a Junos configuration, you do set GE.000, disable, that'll do it. If it doesn't have config, it'll still come up with link. If you put in disable, it will not. Oh, and my son's here, so I guess I'll have to edit that bit out. Huh. Oh yeah, disabling interfaces. <laughs> my son came in to announce his new bed showing up and I just carried it upstairs. Whew. Man, that latex mattress is freaking heavy. Anyway, that's how you disable interfaces. You can also do it from the shell using um, if config up and down. That's the fastest way to do it, but you gotta be logged in as root. I won't get too deep into that. I have a question about it, but in the content, I'll respond. And I'm gonna get cracking on that fifth video right now, which I say all the time. It's just, I am a few days away from vacation. I really wanna get this series knocked out beforehand. So I probably mean it. Thanks for stopping by. And uh, again, content is driven by questions. So ask away.